So let's go celebrate. Happy Wow, well, we have a lot to talk about in this video, but first I'm going to shower and get ready. This is the video that maybe you've been waiting for, but I've definitely been waiting for. And you can tell by the title what it's about. Basically, last night I received an email from my attorney confirming that my divorce is legal and official. So I am officially, legally a single woman. I can change my last name legally back to my maiden name. Now that's gonna be a whole process that I really don't wanna do, but I will. Let's talk a little bit about <laughs> my divorce. I guess. So me and my ex-husband separated on around the first week of April. So like April 3rd or something of 2021. This was a long time coming. I think we both knew it was coming. We had spent a whole month separated in March and then we officially separated in April. And it was an emotional journey. I've been opening up a little bit more about it and now that I am legally separated from my ex, I feel like I can talk a little more open about it but not too much. I still want to keep things you know private I still respect my ex-husband and all that so after we separated I feel like that was when it hurt the most because throughout the marriage I was hurt by things that were happening but it's how someone acts right after separation and the process of divorce that I feel like sh shows their true colors I got extremely extremely hurt by not only my ex but a lot of people in the process and I had to be very careful about who I actually confided in and I think that was like the hardest part feeling like I was disappointed pointing everyone I knew and losing a lot of people that I loved and were once in my life. Another really hard thing was my ex moved back to our hometown. We grew up together. Our families were best friends. I think a lot of them are still friends, but I don't really know. I don't keep up with all that. So therefore, my ex could kind of, you know, say whatever. He was in my hometown and I had moved to a new state where I didn't really know anyone and I started completely over because uh, I feel like that's like what I had to do. I couldn't keep living in that apartment that we had together. I spent I spent a lot of months just like grieving, being really sad, still dealing with depression, anxiety like crazy, not being able to get over that and it took like a lot, a lot of time, healing, therapy, and ultimately coming to know Jesus to be able to get over that situation. I would say that I first felt like, okay, I'm actually over this person in like November-ish around Thanksgiving. My ex had gotten a new girlfriend and I thought I was over him and that really showed that I wasn't and it hurt a lot. Uh, I was pretty public. It just was not a good time for me being like everyone just sending me pictures and I'm like please stop. So that kind of pushed me to completely get over my ex and just deal with my emotions myself and like realizing okay there is no hope there is no future for this marriage it is going to be over. Then I spent the next couple months completely changing my life focusing on myself uh, growing my relationship with God and realizing I am going to be independent I am my own person and the only thing I can affect in this situation is myself how I react what I'm gonna do and what information I'm gonna share. So I took control of my life and I did what I had to and I stayed silent like most of the time. Anytime rumors were brought about me, I was just kind of like, well, that's not true. But I didn't feel the need to be like, oh, it's not true because this, 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 and this. Like, I was just like, it's not true, but you can believe what you want. And I think that's the best way to go about these situations because people don't, they don't have to know everything about you. Um, I think this was a really hard time because this was the first time since like growing up that I was on my own. And I feel like a lot in the culture that I grew up in, like with the religion I was in, is like, oh, well, a woman isn't really independent. She needs a husband. And so when I got married, it was like, okay, yeah, Cindy's independent. She has her own family because she's married. But then after the separation, it was like, okay, well then she's not independent anymore. She's He's not an adult. That's kind of the vibe that I got. I'm just explaining what I felt from people and that's kind of the vibe that I felt and I had to realize hey I am an adult and as my own individual adult human being I do not have to share any information with anyone and it doesn't matter how close we are I get to decide what leaves my mind and that was like the craziest realization for me through this whole process was like I'm my own person I feel like I hadn't ever been my own person because I went from being in this serious relationship for years we started dating when we were 17 to, you know, before that I was living with my parents. So it's like, this was the first time I really felt like my own individual. Um, but anyway, I kind of wanted to touch on the legal things just a little bit. So basically in the summer we talked about, okay, by the end of summer, let's start the legal process. And uh, I, I'm like, what do I share? What do I share? There was a lot of drama that went down with financial stuff. 
how do I put this without talking about it too much? Let's just say I've always been financially independent. There wasn't any money to split by the time we separated. We'll just we'll just put it at that. So I basically had to start completely over after the separation. And so towards the end of the summer, we're like, okay, fine. At the end of the summer, we'll talk about it. Comes in the summer, we couldn't agree on anything. Um, and then it was like I don't know, a month later. I, I want to say it was like August when my ex was like, you know what? If you're not gonna, okay, I, I really don't. I don't even know how to phrase this because I really don't want to throw my ex under the bus. We're on good terms now. Basically, he was like, I'm getting an attorney. Kind of threatened me with that. I was like, okay. Okay, it is what it is when I thought it was gonna be like okay we mutually agree that we don't want to be together we can just you know pay the $200 court fees get it done simple cheap easy no so lawyer involved I get a lawyer about a month later it took me a long time because the lawyer that I wanted to use wasn't taking any clients so then I had to try to find a new one let me tell you when you do anything involving lawyers it is going to take 10 times longer than if you would have done it yourself it takes not even kidding months to get like everything straightened my lawyer knows what I want he knows the situation uh, reaching out to my ex's lawyers and just that whole situation it comes like I don't know fall time and this rumor started that I didn't want to sign the papers I had a lawyer I was working on it basically a bunch of drama went down I was like communicating with my lawyer I had even like signed a couple things but apparently that wasn't like the papers I needed to sign I finally got like served like someone literally came to my door and like served me divorce papers I was like I thought we already did this I was so confused I was trying to talk to my lawyer but like every time I called he was in court it takes you know a week to respond to an email so lawyers just take forever to do anything come like you know December January ish was it more like February it was sometime in the winter Winter. all of this is like mushed together in my brain um I had some family reach out and it was just like you just need to talk to each other because we hadn't talked to each other in months like not even a text because it just never went well I finally reached out we talked a little you know he was like well you're not signing the papers we haven't received anything from you that you want to sign the papers in the meantime i would gotten a letter from his lawyer saying like we're gonna take you to court if you don't respond so i call my lawyer and i'm like well, what's the deal and they're like well we're working on it like we just got the thing that you needed to have i had to notarize something and then missouri doesn't accept accept e-notarized stuff or whatever so then I had to mail the original form for them to submit huge process finally they got the paper and they were like we just submitted it like yesterday so it's gonna be like a week or so and if you go to court it's gonna cost you like whew, I don't even want to imagine how much it would cost to go to court luckily we did not go to court I don't think either of us wanted to go to court basically it's like well we haven't gotten anything saying that you even want a divorce I was like you know that's not true I do want a divorce I want to get this going I have a lawyer is working on it things take time so yeah then it was basically like after that things went like as fast as they possibly could finally things got situated our lawyers came to like an agreement where after I just want to after all this I spent so much money on a lawyer even just for the simplest things in the world it costs so much money and after all that, you know what our agreement was? Sydney keeps what she had before you were married and you keep what you had before you married. Nothing that we couldn't have agreed on, AKA just basically pretend the marriage didn't happen financially or property wise or whatever. Are you kidding me? This is exactly what I wanted to spend $200 on, not thousands. <laughs> Sorry, it just frustrates me a lot. Anyways, we signed the papers finally like two weeks ago i want to say i signed the papers and like i'm not even kidding from february to beginning of april is how long it took to submit a couple forms and get a thing notarized and then get that sent into a judge why couldn't we have done this in fall i do not know i don't know why my lawyers took so long i don't know what the deal was basically i found out last night over a year after we had separated that my divorce was finalized, official, and I am legally, officially a single woman. So I will say that it is a little bittersweet. I think it's more just like frustrating because I have this whole past year to like completely get over the relationship. So I think it is good that it took a while, but at the same time, that makes it easier to just be like, oh yeah, I'm not really sad. It's, it's like not really bittersweet because I'm just like, okay, finally it's done. Like I've been moved on for a while, but I've been legally tied to this person. I'm free. Um, whenever I got the email, literally my first feeling was finally, you know, we've talked a couple times and I'm say that we're on good terms maybe not even good terms just like we're mutual now I'm gonna go out tonight I'm wearing all black 
you know, gotta celebrate the death of the marriage. <laughs> go celebrate with some friends. We're just gonna go to Texas Roadhouse. Maybe have like a drink and just some really good food. Eat like 10,000 rolls. My pants are stretchy, so I'm ready to go and have a good time. I'm just gonna answer a quick few questions that you guys might have. How soon after this divorce do you think you'd ever want to get married again? Um, I am completely surrendering that to God. I have no clue. I hope that it's not like a soon thing because I do have a little bit of fears and maybe some commitment issues now and just you never know what's gonna happen. But I, I don't like putting dates on things like that because I really don't know and it's up to God. But I am open to dating and relationships. This is actually a really good question. Um, how can you justify your divorce with your faith? I'm going through a divorce right now. First of all, my heart goes out to you, I'm so sorry. Um, but first of all, there are a couple reasons if we wanna talk biblically that are justified for divorce. But then again, I also think that your relationship with God comes first. We don't live under the law anymore. We live under grace. We're human beings and we're gonna mess up. I'm not gonna speak for God, but I personally, and my relationship with God and healing through this has been, he's not gonna let you stay in a situation that either you should have never been in, is not good for you, and especially if it's hindering your relationship with God. There is so much that goes into this. I literally am in a divorce care class at my church, and I would highly recommend that if you're going through this or you have questions about divorce, that you talk to some people who have a better understanding of that or go through a class. I would like to say that I was so anti-divorce before the situation, especially with faith. It's like, no, God would never want divorce. And it's like, really, if it's not you, don't worry about it. I don't think it's our job to just be like, hey, that's bad, God doesn't want you to do that. As if I'm not struggling, as if I'm not talking to God about it every single day. Okay, other point is that I actually was not even a Christian when I was married, and I wasn't a Christian when I got separated. So, that's kind of another toss up, like how can you, how could, like, you know what I mean? Do you have any regrets or wish you would have done something different? Yeah, I have some regrets for the way I acted after our separation. There were definitely things I did wrong that I should not have done. I think that there was a lot of hurt on both sides from things that we did, but it's like, you're reacting so emotionally and I wish I could have reacted more rationally, but I was a very like emotional person back then and had really no emotional intelligence. I was dealing with a lot of PTSD and a lot of the symptoms from that and I'm not gonna use it as an excuse but at the same time um, it's almost like I couldn't help it but I do take responsibility for that and I wish I, I would have been better I also kind of just regret like not I don't want to say I regret getting married in the first place or getting married so young but I mean it's kind of the truth like we really I think that we shouldn't have ever been put in the position to make it feel like that was something that we had to do with the pressure of either family or religion the culture we grew up in I just wish that that wasn't the case. Okay, so I hope that kind of helped a little bit and explained the situation a little. I know this video is a little long, but I just wanted to explain somewhat of my situation. But I am officially legally single now. So let's go celebrate. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody, Everybody has mistakes. mistakes. We're now going to H-E-B to get a cake. And also Alyssa is giving me Matrix. <laughs> We're hoping that they can decorate it for us, but that time might already be done because it's like seven. But we wanted to say divorced. Hey! <gasps> Wait, we might have to drop the cake idea because I love these. We're getting this cake. It's gonna write divorce. <laughs> Happy divorce day. Say so 